This episode contains explicit language. I didn't realise to the extent how absent he was until I needed him. Your local MP should be looking out for you. But some people in my hometown of Sheffield feel like they don't have an MP right now. The biggest thing that I think people feel is entirely unrepresented. Because it's like, where, where is he? Jared O'Mara last went to Parliament at the beginning of April. If Jared O'Mara, the guy who was elected MP for Sheffield Hallam, isn't running things, then who is? They could be campaigning for absolutely anything against anyone's agenda. It could be neo-Nazis. I'm Dino Sophos. This is the next episode. It all started with a shock election result a couple of years ago. And I hereby declare... So, that Jared uh, Nick O'Mara Clegg has, uh, has lost his seat in Sheffield Hallam. It's worth remembering, he looks uh, quite saddened by that, that he was the man responsible for the great experiment in politics. The 35-year-old pub owner, Jared O'Mara, was taking on Nick Clegg in the 2017 election. Jared was running as the Labour candidate, Nick, a former deputy prime minister and leader of the Liberal Democrats. It was a massive upset, and it's fair to say that no one, including Jared himself, expected him to win. Jobs might put me mildly, uh, going from the pub to the Palace of Westminster. I don't think there's many people that have done that before. Jared describes himself as the first autistic MP with cerebral palsy and other disabilities. When he became an MP, he said politicians needed to do more for disabled people and argued that the Parliament building in London should be made more accessible. It's not easy and I've got lost uh, countless times wandering around the Houses of Commons and things should really be signposted. But lots of people say that Jared's time in office has been a failure. In October 2017, an online politics blog called Guido Fawkes found offensive, sexist and homophobic comments that Jared had written online 10 years before he was an MP. There's some really nasty stuff about celebrities like Girls Aloud and Jamie Cullum. I won't bother reading them for you. Around that time, a woman called Sophie, who'd met Jared on a dating app, claimed that he drunkenly insulted her just a few months before he was elected. Obviously, some of the things aren't broadcastable, but um, there were some transphobic slurs in there, but um, he called me an ugly bitch. Amara said that this incident was absolutely untrue, but apologised for the online comments. But all of this ended up with Jared being suspended from the Labour Party. He said in July that he'd made three suicide attempts after all this. Jared eventually decided to quit the party and is now an independent MP. This means that he now doesn't have to answer to a political party at all. This matters to this story, as one of the jobs of a political party is to keep its MPs in order, and Jared doesn't have this anymore. Things haven't got any better for voters here. In April, Jared closed his office saying there'd be a temporary pause in handling casework, as in problems that people bring to MPs to sort out. So then he moved to a new office and hired some new staff. The main guy was 26-year-old Gareth Arnold. He was running the office as chief of staff. This was about nine weeks ago in June 2019. And then, just as if everything was totally okay again, Jared told BBC Look North that he was going to stand for re-election. With the right support around me, uh, with people who I just got all the feels for, yeah, and with with renewed vigour, I'm standing again next time, telling you. This interview's quite important to this story, and we'll come back to it later. So things were back on track in Hallam then? Apparently not. Cheers. Thanks. I was just leaving work the other day and I opened Twitter and up popped this absolutely outrageous thread on Jared O'Mara's Twitter account. But it wasn't Jared tweeting, it was Gareth Arnold. Here's a little flavour of it. Comms teen signing off, forever. Jared, you are the most disgustingly, morally bankrupt person I've ever had the displeasure of working with. You don't care about your constituents, you don't care about anyone but yourself. I cannot and will not defend you and your vile, inexcusable contempt for the people that voted for you. Sheffield Hallam deserves so much better than you. Consider this my resignation. Thanks, Gareth Arnold. And that was the first time I'd heard of Gareth. That night, I followed him on Twitter and I asked if I could chat to him to see what was going on back home. He DM'd me straight back. Hey dude, I know your brother from Picture House. That's a bar in Sheffield that my brother used to pull pints at. And then we started chatting. He was pretty open with me right from the start. He said, call me tomorrow and I'll tell you every single last gritty detail. I was interested. 
A few days afterwards, it came out that Jared had been sending sexually inappropriate messages to one of his former staff, Jen Barnes. He apologised, he said he was mentally unwell and needed to take time out to get professional help with mental health and personal problems. But rather than resigning straight away, he was going to do it when Parliament's back from summer holidays. And that's in September. I've got loads of questions, but mainly, if he's off sick and he's still the MP, then what happens now? So, I headed home. I'm sorry for the mess I made Like I walked into the room and destroyed everything No, I did not mean to make it rain I know you're trying to help and I keep pushing away So I'm going to have a chat with Sinead Parkinson. She lives here and she's one of the founding members of the Hallam Constituents Facebook group that's been set up by people who are struggling without the help of their MP. One of the um, constituents that reached out to me and said she has been trying to contact Jared for a number of weeks in the last couple of weeks recently. She has continuously reached out to Gareth in the last week and said, could you please help? Could you please help? And there's been no response. He isn't dealing with cases. But when you started to use the only form of communication available to us, which was his Twitter account, you asked questions which were very polite... He couldn't answer, and then when you asked enough questions he couldn't answer, he would just block you. You would just block So, so you were blocked on, tw- yes. on Twitter? Right. I was blocked, and a great number of people in the Hallam constituency were blocked. Who was replying to these messages on Twitter? Was it Jared or was it his staff, as, f- as far as you know? As far as I was aware, in the beginning, it was Jared. Then we actually found out it wasn't Jared. It was his comms team, which was primarily made up of Gareth... Arnold, the contempt that he showed to his constituents that Gareth showed on behalf of Jared was absolutely shocking. It's worth saying as well that there are quite a lot of young voters around here. Sheffield is a massive student city and a lot of them live around here in Hallam. At the last election, the voter turnout was 78%, which is unusually high these days. A lot of them were switched on by the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, and Jared O'Mara was their guy. I'm going to the pub now to chat to a couple of local lads, Luca and James, who are plugged into politics here. I don't know who's there. It could be anyone. My gran could be in that office and she could just be getting paid. They could be campaigning for absolutely anything against anyone's agenda. Could be neo-Nazis. No idea. I have literally no idea what is going on in that in that office. Obviously, yeah. Jared has no idea either. Yeah, my name's Luca. I'm from Sheffield. I'm 19. My day job, I'm a pizza chef. I think the thing is, it's like the idea of your MP is they're your link to the government. They're your way of having any kind of, like, interaction with the way the country's run, right? And, like, if you don't have that, if you don't have someone who... Because it's like, where where is he? Like he doesn't turn up to his surgeries. He doesn't. He doesn't have like a public face in any way. Like, I, I, like there's no way that people can can talk to him. So in a sen- in a sense, like their link with the government has just been removed. And in lieu of that, basically, there's a team of people who are getting paid by whoever. I mean, yeah, by us, by 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 tax money to do. It seems like where the fuck they want, really. It doesn't seem very democratic. Everywhere I go, there seem to be people with questions about what's going on in the office now and who's running it. And that's Gareth Arnold. I know he resigned on Jared's Twitter, but he's actually still running the office of Jared O'Mara MP. He says he's just extended his notice period. Sometimes when we do an interview, we ask people to say something to check the mic levels. And Gareth launched into a poem. You can have a listen to what your voice sounds like so you get an idea of how, when you speak closely to it. We caught the tread of dancing feet, we loitered down the moonlit street and stopped beneath the harlot's house. Inside above the dun fray, we heard the loud musicians play the Troy's Libus Hers of Strauss. No, I sound fantastic. Gareth's an interesting character. He's only 26, but he's made a bit of a name for himself on social media. One of the things he did was start a parody account of the far right political organisation Britain First. And lots of people were convinced it was legit and fell for fake stories he wrote, like one about halal sunglasses. But now he's got a job as Jared O'Mara's chief of staff. He fancies himself as a bit of a PR crisis management guru 
and tells me he's turned down a much higher paid job in California to work in the constituency office of Jared O'Mara. Why? And the trees far away grow higher than the rain And people come and people go So I don't know who to blame anymore Oh! You know, I'm, I'm the guy that people bring in every now and then to, like, sort a project out or get things back on the ground or give it direction and aim and tie it all together. Gareth knows Jared O'Mara from a few years back. Four or five years ago, when we were in the smoking area of the Frog and Parrot, uh, and we just got talking about politics, which is never a good thing to do when you're drinking, but uh, he was really good sport and, you know, we found a lot of common ground. But now, with Jared not in the picture, remember he's at home taking time out to deal with his mental health issues. Who's running the place? People have joked to me that I was basically the MP for Sheffield Hallam because Jared was so, like, um, what's the word? Not here, basically. Going to the, do you know, the Three Tons pub? When Gareth agreed to meet me at Jared Amara's office, I really didn't know what to expect. The day before I came to the office, another journalist at the BBC, a colleague of mine, Sean Clare, from the Victoria Derbyshire programme, was invited to do some filming. He'd agreed to do an interview with us the, the night before, and when I got there, he acted like that conversation never happened. Was adamant that he would not do an interview. He said he was too scruffy, didn't want to go on camera. So all in all, a pretty weird experience for you? Completely bizarre. One of the most strange experiences that I think I can remember having in, in my years of journalism. He wants to have a beer first, so we've arranged to meet at the pub opposite the office. That's him in the window there. There's two other lads in there with Gareth, Charlie and Ben. He's, he's got company as well. I don't know, I think it's him. All right, hiya. Yeah, I'm ben. Ben, Dino, nice to meet you. Ben says he's 18 and he's waiting for his A-level results in a couple of weeks. He tells me he's the head of communications in the office and because he's got this job, he earns quite a lot more than his other mates. I've never been to this beer at the bar. What it's great. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and it's only great because the office is there. And, and they just do brilliant, like, proper Yorkshire homemade chips Shit, during right. the day. Then there's Charlie. He doesn't say much. He's 21 and works in the office too. Gareth tells me Charlie was his caseworker who looks after the issues that locals come to the office for, like problems with local services, benefits, immigration status, that sort of thing. This, is, this room is the office, is it? This is the office, yes. It's the Omara complex. We get three copies of the new statesman sent. So as soon as we walk through the door, they're obviously really gassed about all the free political magazines and DVDs they get sent in the post. But Gareth's also really keen for me to see something on their office Mac. Please tell me you've got that project already open, Ben. So he asked Ben to open the file. Which was so good. I started it and Ben's trying to finish it off. They all look really pleased with themselves about it. I wouldn't say it's a work of genius. Show them the apocalypse now, what? So what, the, these are the videos you're working on? It's that one. They've edited together some pretty unflattering that. videos of Jared O'Mara. Just worth saying, Jared says he's recently attempted to take his own life. The clips are mixed to a song by the Smiths, which apparently is one of Jared's favourites. Yeah. So, what's, so what's this you've been making? Wait, uh, wait, no, we, we definitely can't talk about this because this is... Oh, right, OK, fine. No, 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 this, this is... Just oh, right, OK. Out. I'm trying to do this. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> I've already asked Gareth if I can record all this, but he's just clocked that I've still got the microphone out. He asked me to turn it off. You can't record this, he says. This is us taking the piss out of Jared. I've honestly never been in a situation like this. I'm thinking, this is your boss. Not only that, he's an MP suffering with serious mental health issues and you're making a video of his worst moments. I mean, there's something definitely not right here. I asked Gareth about this on WhatsApp afterwards, and he tells me I'm going to send it to Jared, and if he approves it, I'll upload it. Kind of like something for sentimental value, what's an all depiction of his time as an MP. There were a few things that Gareth said that made me think he didn't have Jared's best interests at heart. You know, I was there. He, he drank a litre of vodka before a BBC Look North interview, which, funnily enough, was the best interview he's ever given. Mm. I wouldn't have said this even a few weeks ago, yeah. And I just remember just being stood there at 11am on a Friday morning outside a wine bar going, oh, my God, the MP that I'm doing communications for is absolutely ratted and he's about to do an interview. I set up for him. And with renewed vigour, I'm standing again next time telling him. 
uh, you know, there's really surreal moments like that that it's funny when you look back in hindsight, but, you know, only for a few seconds until you think, wow, this man's an elected public official on a very good salary. So Gareth's still working in the office right now, even after he resigned on Jared's social media. He says he's extended his notice period himself and is still on the payroll. But have a listen to this. I ask him if he even has the right security clearance to be working in an MP's office. You're not vetted by the Parliament. You're not, no, you're not technically uh, registered uh, with the parliamentary you know, authorities or anything. I, I, I am very much just a man with a job description. Yeah. But you're, you're running this payroll. office. Absolutely, yeah. I am I'm running this office, yeah. Nobody's vetted you. Nobody's I don't have a security clearance. Uh, but, you know, which, which sounds ridiculous. You have to be cleared to work for an MP. Uh... Yeah, I guess. You do, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and you're not, and you're running this office. I am running a, a constituency office on behalf of an MP without correct parliamentary vetting, yes. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, uh, there's a lot of people who will be extremely would, angry would, and concerned to yeah, hear that. Yeah, pe- people would... Go, oh because you've God. got you've got computers in this office with I've, files with people's very you know very yeah, personal a, sensitive abs- information. Absolutely, but I am a pretty safe pair of hands. I did get the office back up and running. The staff can come to me. You know, people have joked to me that I was basically the MP for Sheffield Hallam because Jared was so like what's the word not here basically, uh, which and, I, do you, I, and do you buy that? To be honest, I laughed at it, but the, just the idea that someone said it just kind of horrified me. But that's the truth, right? I mean, you've got people in the office with you who, who answer to you. You know, they're not answering to Jared, they're answering to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I asked Gareth whether this was really good enough for the people of Sheffield Hallam, but he wanted to chat about what was in store for Jared's career. It's going to be a long road back to recovery because... You know, it's you know. Firstly, what's he going to do for a job after this? Well, MPs get paid nearly eighty thousand pounds a year after tax. You you get about four k to take home. Uh, going from that to being entirely unemployed, and also you know you've got a reputation of whatever in the media. It's going to be incredibly tough to get a job. Mm. So he's also got that to face in the future as well. I think that a lot of people have genuine compassion for yeah. for Jared with his mental health problems. My mum and dad live in this constituency. Yeah. They've got a lot of mates here. I know there are a lot of angry people in yeah. Sheffield Hallam what, who, right. who feel they don't have any representation. It's a really turbulent time, yes. as, as you well know, in yeah. politics. There's some big votes coming up about yeah, Brexit. Absolutely. And they don't feel they have access to a, yeah. to I, their elected representative. And it must be incredibly annoying when you just want representation. The bulk of what we do here mm. is casework. Are the office staff capable of dealing with casework? Are they experienced? They've not been doing it a million years, no. They've really kind of found their feet with it. But, yes, they are very good at it, you know. And currently, as we stand today, you know, we are we're up to date with casework. We get casework every day, but we respond within the same day. We can send out letters the same day. We can do everything. Is it not the right thing to do for Jared to step aside immediately? Not to, not to wait until, you know, a timetable that he decides he sets when he's not really physically or mentally well enough to do that. Do you not think that really somebody needs to step in and say, you need to stand aside immediately? Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think he probably should reside immediately and I was kind of hoping that he might have done it last week. But the fact that he has committed to a date and is receiving help, I think, although it's frustrating, there should be a sense of relief You can make your own mind up about what Gareth said, but I can't really get over the fact that he's in charge of this office. And as he jokes, some people say he's the acting MP for Sheffield Hallam. But remember this, he's not had a security clearance from Parliament. He's accessing the MP's email address. He can get sensitive personal information about constituents. And his team's making videos mocking Jared. He also admitted to my colleague Sean that he had personally blocked constituents on Twitter, but he said it was only people who were swearing or being abusive. He said, if you're going to be a twat, we're going to block you. As the MP, Jared O'Mara is responsible for his office, but Jared himself has said he's not well enough to run the office. So I've just driven to Stocksbridge on the other side of Sheffield and I'm going to catch up with Angela Smith, who was until recently a, uh, a Labour MP, 
but stood down and is now an independent. So similar sort of situation to Jared O'Mara. Um, and I'm, I'm here to check out her constituency office and to see what the setup in her office is and how it compares to what's going on in Hallam. Hello. Hiya, it's Dino here from the BBC. Yeah. I'm here to see Angela. Hi. Hiya. So I wanted to talk to you about what I saw in the Sheffield Hallam constituency office. You know, in terms of initial impressions of me walking into this office compared to walking into that office the other day was, yeah. you know, light years apart. I, um, so yeah. I'll play you some of the stuff we recorded. You're, you're not vetted by, by Parliament. You're not no. you're technically uh, registered uh, with the parliamentary sure. authorities. Or anything. I, I, I am very much just a man with a job description. Yeah. But you're, you're running this payroll. office. Absolutely, yeah. I am I'm running this office. Deeply, deeply unethical. Why is it important for staff like the, the guy there, Gareth, who's his chief of staff, yeah. and, and the other caseworkers, why is it important for them to be, to be vetted and what are the implications if they're not? People out there come to us with very personal problems mm. sometimes and I think staff need to be vetted to be sure that, to, so that we, we can be confident that they have the integrity and the professionalism required to deal with those cases sensitively and confidentially. Mm. You were telling me before we started recording that you've actually had a, a few of the constituents from Sheffield Hallam contacting yeah. you, is, yeah. is that right? Yeah, we've had a handful recently mm. contact us because they can't get any um, response from, from Jared Amara's office, which is a great concern. At the end of the day, the resource that goes into this, and it is a service... It's not insignificant, and we need to use it to best effect. So it worries me a great deal that I'm now beginning to get a, a certain degree of pressure. Yeah, it's not significant, but I, I'm beginning to get constituents contact me who actually should be going to, to Jared Amara's office. Have you dealt with any of those personally, or is it a case no, right? Okay. we've had to go back and say, look, you're not a constituent. I mean, right. there are protocols around that mm. and say, you know, you really need to see your own MP, I'm afraid. Mm. Uh, it's not ideal. No. I just don't know what people in Harlem are doing if they've got a really severe problem. Um, what, what do you think needs to happen here? Parliament needs to look again at how to deal with uh, a situation in which an, an office just becomes completely dysfunctional. None of that has been debated at the moment. We don't have a sense, a blueprint, uh, a template for what an MP's service should look like. Mm. And the Jared O'Mara situation probably begs the question, well, it does beg the question about whether or not we do need to agree minimum standards. With what we've seen, with what the BBC has seen mm. currently in the, in the Hallam office, what do you think needs to happen immediately in that office? Of course, the usual route to sorting this kind of thing out is, is that the individual concerned recognises the the moral case for standing down and moving on. Immediately. Which... Immediately. So we tried to talk to different people in Parliament, senior people responsible for how the place is run, like the office of John Burko, the Speaker of the House of Commons, order, order. Good people whose job it is to keep MPs in order. But they said... The Speaker does not have any powers over MPs in relation to staff. The Speaker neither employs MPs nor their staff. There is a process for complaints to be made via the Independent Complaints and Grievance Scheme. But this really doesn't help the voters of Sheffield Hallam, and they literally have nowhere to go on this. There is recall legislation, which means in extreme circumstances, like your MP goes to prison or is suspended from Parliament for a few weeks, you can then launch a petition to get a new MP in your area. But none of that helps the people here. And Luca from the pub earlier thinks things really need to change. I mean, I think, it, I think it should be easier to, to change your MP if they're not doing their job right and if they're not listening to their constituents. You might think that this is just a story about what's going on here in Sheffield Hallam. But at a time when politics has been turned upside down, with more MPs quitting their parties and going at things alone, this could be an issue that Parliament really needs to look at again. And just so you know, we also reached out to Jared O'Mara to let him know that we were doing this story but he didn't get back to us. So let's see what happens on the next episode of this one. Thanks to everyone in Sheffield who spoke to me and to the guys involved in this week's episode, Sam, Poppy, Nick and Joey. 
If you want to get in touch with us, the email is the next episode at bbc.co.uk. Or if you want to reach us on Twitter or Insta, we're using the hashtag the next episode. As ever, music comes from BBC Introducing. In fact, a load of the songs used in today's podcast have come from Sheffield. And Sheffield obviously produces the best music in the world. This last one is I'm Not Your Man by Black Waters. And the trees far away grow higher than the rain. And people come and people go, so I don't know who to blame anymore. Oh, it's a new revolution of parties and live out my days. See you now At the end of the world